Okay, coming back to the PowerPoint, um, we have types of sketching. So we're using either orthographic or isometric views. We'll start with orthographic views. Um, and uh, as it says here, top front right side view is typical. If you need more views to correctly dimension the part, you'd use more views. Or you do use what other views. Maybe you need the top and left and, and, uh, and front view to show the part correctly. Um, two views are required for simple geometric shapes, so cylinders, cones, boxes, okay, two views, that's all you need. A third view doesn't give you any more information. Uh, you may need a, a one view for a flat object. If you just have a flat piece of sheet metal cut to some shape uh, and you need to dimension that, you just have you know, the, the face of that, that sheet metal and uh, one view is fine with a note that says how thick that material is that's flat and you're, and you're done in one view. Uh, you may need sectional views, auxiliary views, or partial views to help uh, convey information. We'll get to those type of views later on. Excuse me. I'll cut that. Don't worry. <clears throat> Isometric pictorial, that's the other type of view. Remember, isometric pictorial is a three-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. Now, let me point this out. It's not a perfect perspective. It's not, as you might call a per perfect perspective, is how your eye sees something. Remember, your perspective is the human perspective. It's what a part looks like looking at it from two points of view, two eyes, looking at an object. You're actually getting two views, and your mind puts those two views together into a three-dimensional looking object instead of a flat object. If you lose one eye, everything in the world looks flat to you, okay, in about a week <laughs> or less. Uh, so an isometric pictorial, we'll get to that when we get to that homework set. We'll bring up isometric grid, and I'll show you how that works. But as you see, it says on the bottom, oblique and other perspectives. There are other perspectives one-point perspective, two-point perspectives, obliques, uh, different ways to draw things. We won't be using those perspectives. We will be using only orthographic or an isometric, okay? Let's see, down there. There we go. Uh, so, orthographic views. When we're talking about orthographic views, number of views required, well, it depends, right? We need as many views as necessary to correctly dimension the part. That might not be readily understood by you yet because we're not dimensioning any parts until about week seven. Um, remember your hidden line conventions, object lines are, are take, object lines take precedence over hidden lines, which take precedence over center lines, okay? That's your line precedence. Remember hidden lines are dashed lines, about an eighth of an inch long, Okay, six or, or and maybe a less than maybe a thirty seconds of an inch a dash between them. So, uh, in millimeters, it'd be like three, four millimeters long with a millimeter dash between it, and then a long. So it's long, short dash, long dash, short dash. Oh, sorry, that's center line. Hidden line. Let's start over. Hidden line is dashed line, uh, like a three or four millimeter dashed line with a millimeter in between, and it goes dash dash, 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 dash. Try to be consistent with the lengths of your dashes, okay? No matter how long the line is, the dashes should all be the same length. The uh, gaps between the dashes should be very small. Uh, center line is a long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, with the short dash about as long as the hidden line dash. Line precedence, remember that uh, an object line takes precedence over a hidden line if they're one on top of one another and a hidden line takes precedence over a center line. Um, when we do the projecting between views, this is sort of just a, an outline projection between views and what to do and how to do it, and I'll give examples of that in the videos covering how to hand sketch. That ought to be fun, because I got a hand sketch with a, with a tablet and a pen. This is what I'll be drawing on. You see that? Not a tablet tablet, as you know of a tablet, but a tablet that's a writing surface, like a, like a, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, okay. what 
like the touch surface on your on your on your laptop okay it's just a big tablet it's like six by ten and hopefully this will help me I haven't used it before in the last week or so hopefully I can draw a sketch on this and it'll sketch on a paint program okay the bottom uh, number six of this slide says different problem types these are the four different problem types uh, that you will be doing for this homework uh, normally we do it in week one you do one problem type and the other four or three problem types on week two you're doing your reading assignments on week one so week two you're gonna do all four problem types uh, this would be a lot of problems to do in one week so I'm actually going to reduce the number of problems I hope it's enough examples that you learn everything you need to learn from it but, uh, we gotta make some changes so this is where it goes uh, 6a given an isometric pictorial that's the first type we'll be working on there'll be a video of a couple examples of this maybe a couple videos of a couple examples and then you will do the the, the ones that you are assigned to do uh, do the make sure you watch the video first okay till you understand the concepts and can repeat those so given an isometric pictorial from the book you need to draw the necessary orthographic view that means three orthographic views a top a front and a right side doing correct line weights line types spacings between them reference in minor lines you'll be shown how to do it and naming the views if you don't name it the top view I don't know that you know it's the top view so you have to tell me 6b given two orthographic views you need to draw the third view okay so you might be given the top and the front view and you need to do, you need to draw the right side you may be given uh, the right side in the, in the front view and you need to draw the top you're always given two views you need to draw the unknown view okay the third view which it's called uh, the unknown view problem three given three incomplete views complete the views so you'll have to resketch the views or I actually have the parts on a PDF file that you can download from Blackboard so you don't have to resketch it you just have to draw in the lines that are missing the rule is you can't erase a line that's there if the lines there it's got to be there now it is possible a hidden line would be covered up by one a new object line okay but you can't erase a line uh, because if that was a solution to the problem you just erase them all and be done with it uh, so given three incomplete views complete the views in those three views set top front right side there will be one or more lines missing of one or more line types in one or more views so in order to find all the parts all, all the lines that are missing you need to basically find every contour in every view correctly drawn but I'll explain how we get we get to that okay uh, last one is given a multi view or an orthographic view sketch an isometric pictorial from it all you need is two views two orthographic views to be able to draw an isometric pictorial you may be given three okay but you'll need at least two to draw an isometric remember each orthographic view tells you two dimensions a front view gives me height and width a right side view gives me height and depth and a top view gives me width and depth so any two views gives you height width and depth information definitions uh, in any subject matter that you get into in college uh, you're given new information new concepts to, to understand and you should always learn uh, the definitions new words or meanings of words that you already know which is applicable for this subject you know these words already but how they're put together sometimes means something than what you're normally used to for instance the word normal normal means well the in psychology normal means 85 percent of what most people would call normal that's normal so normal would be right-handed people technically speaking left-handed people are 15 percent of the population about so left-handed people are abnormal <laughs> as the word is used in psychology doesn't say it's right or wrong okay it just says this is what's typically the case and if it's 85 percent always this way then that's called normal 
normal in geometry uh, or in in orthographic views, normal means uh, horizontal or vertical. Sometimes it means if you have a plane this direction and I want a plane normal to it, I go perpendicular to it. Okay, that's what normal means, so horizontal or vertical. Okay, let's see what else we got. So true length, sometimes abbreviated TL, uh, not true love. Okay, true length. A line appears as long as it really is. When does a line appear as long as it really is? If a line, or this pen, represents a line in space. If I look at this pen, perpendicular or normal to it, anywhere around here, perpendicular, that line is going to look true length. Okay? If I look at it from any angle other than perpendicular or normal, that line is going to look not true length. It's going to appear as if it's foreshortened. So point view of a line is you take the line and you look at it from end point to end point, line up the end points, and that view, that line looks like a point. That's called the point view of a line. True view, TV, true view of a plane appears as its true size and true shape, which means you take a plane, my palm, you say, uh, and if you are looking normal to it or perpendicular to it, you see the shape of my palm, true height, true width, okay? That's true view. Edge view, take the same plane, look at it in edge. That plane is gonna look like a, just a line, okay? That's the edge view of a plane. EV, edge view, a plane appears as a line. Foreshortened, FS, foreshortened. This is when a line or a plane appears shorter or smaller than it actually is. You take that line or that plane and you tip it on one axis or two axes, and it's going to look shorter than it, than it would if you were looking normal or perpendicular to it. There's your normal plane, horizontal and vertical plane. So normal plane is just another way to say horizontal and vertical or maybe perpendicular to one of the horizontal and verticals. An inclined plane is rotated on one axis. An oblique plane, sometimes the book calls it a compound plane. I always use the term oblique. The book calls a line that's inclined by one, two, or three axes is oblique. When they talk about a plane, if it's inclined by two or three planes, it's called oblique or a compound plane. It basically rotated in multiple axes. Uh, modified construction lines and brake lines. We'll talk about modified construction lines. Um, it's like a modified construction line is, is the line type you would make for a number or lettering of a plane. It's not really dark and it's not so light that you have a time reading it, have a hard time reading it. So or it's a projection line. Okay, you got to draw it dark enough that it doesn't disappear on you when you wipe your hand over your piece of paper, okay? So we use it for point numbering or labeling things, okay? It's gotta be legible and readable, but it doesn't have to be uh, really dark. Remember, your object lines are what you want, nice and thick and dark, so they stand out from all the other mess. Methods to aid visualization. This is near the end of your slides uh, from, present from your PowerPoint that's on Blackboard. Um, and people say, always say, always the student says yes, but I don't care about all this. What's on the test, Professor Eddie? This is what's on your first test, okay? In a nutshell, you need to know these tools I gave you. Now, the tools to solve these four type of homework problems, this slide, Methods to Aid Visualization, are the tools, the eight tools that I will teach you to solve the hand drawing, the hand sketching problems. There is one tool that I don't have to teach you you may or may not be good at it. And that is what we call visualization or your imagination. Can you visualize a three-dimensional object? Can you dimension a two-dimensional view of a three-dimensional object? Can you dimension a three-dimensional view of an object only given two-dimensional views, okay? Your visualization, your imagination is a tool you already have. I don't know how sharp that tool is. Uh, I can't really teach it to you. You already have the ability. It does get better as you learn the other tools and as you work with three-dimensional and two-dimensional objects. But that is not, your visualization is not something that I teach you. It is kind of like your go-to uh, tool 
that you use naturally. And let me warn you, your visualization, your imagination is the worst tool in your toolbox. It's the one you want to go to, but it is the worst tool for solving these problems that you will have to solve. Why? Your visualization is not concrete. Your imagination is always shifting. So when you try to visualize a three-dimensional or a two-dimensional object, it's like trying to memorize a 50-piece puzzle, jigsaw puzzle. You can't do it, not without a whole bunch of time, okay? You will look at that puzzle, and because what your mind tries to do is, is visualize every piece of puzzle and how they all go together at the same time. That's how your mind, your mind works, like a parallel processor. It's like a billion little brains all trying to solve the problem at once. These tools are linear. They tell you how to do it. It's like following a recipe. Top down, that's how you figure it out. Your visualization will give you an incomplete or incorrect solution because basically your mind's guessing. Don't rely on your visualization to solve a problem. Use the other tools and use your visualization to check yourself. Your visualization, your imagination works best when it has all available data laid out for it. That's when your mind works the best, in this case, for these problems. Take this to heart. I've done this for 12 years, and I know what I'm talking about. Okay, It's very easy to just go the old route. Oh, I'm just going to look at it and look at it and look at it until I can see it. And some of you won't believe me until you get the problem wrong. And then you go, why did I get the problem wrong? Some of you won't even ask. They'll just go, oh, well, I got it wrong. Use the tools that I show you and use your visualization to check yourself at the end. Okay, that's how it works the best. So these tools, these eight ways of looking at a part and taking it apart and looking at it and putting it back together in your mind's eye. This is what will be on the test. I mean, knowing how to do these. So projection, and we'll go over projection with the first homework set, uh, but it's basically how to take one point or one object from one view and find it in the other view over a miter line using projection lines. So projection. Line types and line weights mean things. They convey information. If you use them correctly, they will help you solve the problem. If you use them incorrectly, they will make it harder to solve the problem. A visible line, an object line, should be dark. If you make your lines light, they're going to look like every other line. It's going to be hard to differentiate. So a line type is the type, whether it's continuous or dashed or whatever, what type of dash. The weight is, is considered the, the thickness, the width of the line, but more often the darkness. Line of weight, a okay. weight of a line actually is the width of the line and the, the density or the darkness of the line all in one. Since we only have two line widths, so we basically have a wide line and a thin line, your weight is more, more important that you get it dark enough. Uh, a lot of students never darken their lines. They get those cheap mechanical pencils that you can't lean on them hard or they break or the lead goes back up into the pencil. Okay? Um, so you want them, if you get a mechanical pencil, get a real one. The lead will break off before you can push it back into the pencil. Okay? So line weights and line types convey information to the, from the user to the to the person that views the drawing okay if you don't use line types and line weights right people are confused they're confused about what you're trying to explain to them as they say a, uh, a, a picture is worth a thousand words okay well a line is worth about a hundred so you want to draw your pictures well so that people can understand them okay number three isometric pictorial dash 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 multi view multi-view meaning an orthographic view. What that means is isometric pictorials and orthographic views uh, work hand in hand. If you need to draw an isometric pictorial, you'd be given like two or three multi-views. Say you're given two multi-views, two orthographic views. In order to draw that isometric pictorial, it might be helpful to draw the third orthographic view first to give you a little more information readily available. And from that, now you got three views to work from to help you visualize the isometric pictorial. On the other hand, if you have to draw the third missing 
orthographic view from the three view set. And you're having a hard time visualize what that top, I got the right side view, I got the, the front view, but I have a hard time visualizing the top view. If you can draw or even start drawing the isometric pictorial, that helps you visualize. It takes what's in your, your think box up here, your visualization box, and it starts making it more concrete as you can start drawing it. You don't even need to necessarily finish the isometric to help your mind visualize it correctly. So those two isometrics and orthographic views, uh, they work hand in hand for solving and visualizing. Five, uh, related views rule. Well, I'll, I'll explain this one on the first homework set, but the related views rule shows you uh, how it defines how your adjacent views to your front view, how they're related to one another over the miter line. So related views rule basically defines how you show your reference lines and miter line so that you can project correctly, okay? Number six, uh, I number points of lines and I name planes with letters, okay? So that's a good way to remember what you're doing, not forget what you've already figured out. Numbering points, naming planes. We do not name lines because lines are already named by the endpoints. Point one, point two, that's line one, two. So we just name points and name planes. I will number points and name by letter planes. And it's a good thing to do. It's a fast way to write down what you know and not get confused later as you're trying to figure out what something looks like. Seven. Locate a single feature at a time in each view. So when you're trying to, when you get done and you think you're done and you want to check yourself, how do you check yourself? Well, if you haven't used any of these tools yet and you just went by visualization, boy, you might have the wrong and most likely do have something wrong with your solution. So one way to solve that is look at one single thing, a line or a plane or a hole or some feature and make sure it shows up in all three views, visible, invisible or you know hidden but it should show up a plane it will either be look like a contour look like a shape or it'll be an edge view but it's going to be there modeling is uh, the last i mean if you have modeling software or if you have a piece of clay and you need to physically make the object okay in order to turn it around and look at the top view then that's uh, that's a way for the test you won't have modeling available to you you'll have to use the other views but it is a legitimate way and i've used it in industry. How to sketch an ellipse in an isometric pictorial. What else we got? Will always show up in a three view set as two different edge views and two different views and one contour of that same plane. That means you can see the shape of it. So two edge views and one contour in that three view set. That's what a normal plane will look like. Two edge views, one contour. Okay. If the plane you're looking for is an inclined plane, it's inclined in one vector, right? One X, Y, or Z vector. Then in the three view set, that plane, call it plane A, will be visible as one edge view, plane A. And in the other two views, it will look like a contour. Maybe one's foreshortened more than the other, one's longer than the other, but you will see the shape of it. Same shape in a contour, twice one edge view, okay? If you have a curved plane that's similar to an inclined plane, you will see it, for instance, say my hand here is a vertical curved plane. In the top, let me get this over here, in the top of this curved plane in my inside of my palm here, it would look like a curved line in the edge view, okay? Uh, from the front view, it's going to look like a contour of the inside of the cylinder. So from this view, it looks like a contour. And from this view, it looks like I can see a contour too. It's gonna look like a rectangle or something. So that's a curved, uh, curved on one axis. An oblique plane. An oblique plane is a plane that is, or as a book calls it, a compound plane. So when a plane is rotated on two or more axes. So we can rotate it here, and we can rotate it here, 
So there's a contour or an oblique plane. And in all three views, that oblique plane will look like a contour. You will see the shape of the plane, although foreshortened, in all three views. Nice to know what you're looking for. When you're looking for something, you don't know what you're looking for. Okay? At least you have a clue. So remember this slide. Write it down, okay, when you're solving problems. Because this one, you'll go back to more. Point numbering. Minutes. When I get to the point numbering technique on uh, the missing view problem, you might want to look over this. This gives you some hints and tips on how what you're looking for and how to do it. Um, this was actually given to me by my brother Dale when he was teaching this class. Uh, and this is how he explained the numbering technique. That's another technique. Uh, points and numbers, okay? Numbering technique is a specific way to use points and numbers. Um, or points and letters. Uh, but this is how he wrote up the point numbering tips. I said, you know what? I'm going to do a walkthrough. I'm going to actually explain how to do it like a recipe. Yeah, you probably can't even read this on your screen. You can look it up in a PowerPoint note, but it's a step-by-step, -step, like a walkthrough of the numbering technique. And if you get stuck without, you know, help, I'm not, you know, in, <laughs> in class with you. So you're going to have to look at the videos and watch me do the numbering technique and use it. And if you get stuck... This is your walkthrough, and you can just sort of do it step by step. And uh, it's a great, great tool. Uh, of when I learned, uh, when I started teaching this class, I would I did every homework problem, almost every homework problem. Of the missing view problems, I did every homework problem, I think. And I only got one wrong, and it was just because it was a difficult one. And I asked my brother, I said, man, I, it's like I knew the, the plane was either tipped this way or that way, but I had a hard time visualizing because it was in the back of the object. And I said, I didn't know how to solve that, so I guessed and I got it wrong. And he said, oh, you got to use a numbering technique. And I went, what in the heck is the numbering technique? And he showed me once, and I went, oh, that is. The numbering technique is a tool that you can use on an inclined or oblique plane to find the plane in the unknown view without being able to visualize it. That's a great tool, okay? Great tool. You don't have to visualize it. Remember, I've told you already, visualization is the worst tool in your toolbox. It is the broken tool. It will lead you down the dark path more often than not, okay? So use it to check your work, not to, not to try to solve your work. Okay, hope this helps.